This is the Video Lab at Electronic Arts in San Mateo, California. What they're doing here is digitizing this video shot earlier in Hollywood so they can use these scenes in a new CD-ROM based game called The Lost Files of Sherlock Holmes. CD-ROMs are bringing full motion video, stereo sound, and tons of data into computer games and other software applications. Today we'll take a look at the newest in CD-ROM software and hardware on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me this week is Gina Smith, senior editor at PC Computing Magazine. Gina, I have two different chess games up here. This is the chess that comes with one of the Windows Entertainment Packs, and if you move, you know, it's sort of the usual looking chess game. Over here, though, I have chess, battle chess coming off a of CD-ROM. You get, of course, soundtrack here and music uh, that'll come along with this and all kinds of sound effects. Now watch, this is the animation of a capture by that bishop of the night. <laughs> it does. Here. All right, this is kind of a, a little trivial example of, uh, of what you get from CD-ROM, but seriously, if I'm a computer user, what do I get for my money by going out and buying a CD-ROM drive and buying CD-ROM software? Stuart, the amazing and exciting thing about CD-ROM is just the pure volume of data that you can get on one of these things. As most people know, you can get over 600 megabytes right. on one of these little disks. That's a few times the size of the average hard disk, and when you've got all that room, software developers can do some really incredible things. For instance, they can put digitized photos, digitized animations, mm -hmm. sound, graphics, things you would never even want to fit on your hard disk right. if you have any files at all. What about serious business applications? Well, those are slow in coming, but they're just now starting to arrive. And right now, the prime area is reference mm -hmm. materials. You can fit over 300,000 pages, typed pages, on one of these disks. Yeah. So they're natural for putting, say, the entire yellow pages of the country on a disk. All on one disk. All on one disk, <laughs> or a technical reference, yeah. or the complete works of Shakespeare. Mm. And some vendors are even selling uh, collections of sound, animation, and audio clips that you can use to snazz up your presentations. OK. Well, we're going to look at what CD-ROM software can do in applications like games, education, and business. But before you buy CD-ROM software, you have to buy a CD-ROM drive. And that choice is getting more and more complicated. So today, we'll start out with a visit to the PC Week Labs in Foster City to find out what you should look for when you buy a CD-ROM drive. And the most important distinctions from a user view are, first of all, the speed is important. And that is both, both uh, transfer speed, getting the data off, and access speed, or seek, the time that it takes to actually seek something on the disk. The second most important thing is uh, the, the format. What, what types of CDs can it run? Nobody right now who doesn't have a CD drive ought to go out and buy anything that's not an XA format. Because all the standards are converging. There are probably 20 or 30 CD-ROM standards right now. But they're all starting to converge up to this XA pinnacle, which lets you run Photo CD, it lets you run the ISO standard, it lets you run High Sierra. And finally, I recommend to people to get a standard interface on their CD-ROM drives, which means a SCSI, SCSI, or Small Computer Systems Interface. Some of the decisions you have to make are simple. Do you want an internal drive or an external drive? The internal drive is a little more complicated to install. And since a CD-ROM drive can usually do double duty as an audio CD player, you should look for a headphone jack on the front and RCA jacks in the back so you can plug the output into your stereo. How much should you spend on a CD-ROM drive? Well, the cheapest thing possible is going to end up being not SCSI, not XA, and slow. So if somewhere down the road you're willing to put the investment into getting uh, something better, when prices fall, and if you don't need photo CD now, and if you don't need a lot of speed, and you're not going to do video, if all you want to do is run a couple games and be able to look up a little data, that's fine. $150, $200, $250 is great. But if you've got the time and the investment, and you want to do it once, and you want to do it right, look for uh, something that's XA and something that's SCSI, and that's going to be significantly more expensive. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Janelle Patterson.
CD-ROM means different things to different users. It means monumental amounts of data storage, but it also means multimedia capability. Here to show us some examples are Eugene Evans of ICOM Simulations and Blake Schneider of Compton's New Media. Let's start with you, Eugene, and ICOM Simulations mm -hmm. Sherlock Holmes game. And I guess this, in fact, is the most successful entertainment product on a CD-ROM with, with hundreds of thousands already sold out there. That's correct. We need to take All right, now, down. we've seen animation and music so far in the battle chess thing. Now, you have actually real rolling video inside this game, don't you? That's right. Show us how you use it here. Well, on each disc, there are um, three different murder mysteries to solve, and they're illustrated by a total of 90 minutes of video on mm. each disc. Real actors, real actresses on set. This has been a very upsetting day. So here we see Sherlock and Watson in 221 B Baker Street explaining what's been going on. Okay, so they're setting up the problem that we have to solve and playing the game. Correct. What was stolen, who was murdered, and so on. Okay, where do we go from here then if we want to play this? Well, we have these VCR type controls, so we can start that and go into the game itself, where we have on hand various tools that. Um, give us access to a list of names of people uh -huh. that are potential suspects or might be some of people like Inspector Lestrade, mm -hmm. uh, the local coroner in London, who are the type of people who can give us information. Um, so we hear names in the video of people, we get clues from the actual video, mm. and then you can um, go select somebody to go and visit, send Sherlock and Watson to visit those people and hear what they get out of the case. Watch the video, pick so up the So you get clues. more video as you're playing the game. That's correct. So where are we going now? No, we're off to see H.R. Excuse Murray. Me, Dr. Murray. May I have a moment of your time? Ah, Whitson. So nice to see you again. It's Watson, sir. Glad to hear it. Now, what can I do for you, Whitson? Holmes and I are interested no in the debris the from the fire names of other Matthew suspects Cole during Hill. the video. I and then you have to it. decide, OK, well, maybe that person is a potential uh -huh. suspect select from maybe the directory or the notebook and go and visit those yeah. people. Hmm. Eventually you'll decide who was the murderer and you got to go to court and try and uh -huh. prove to the judge that you truly <laughs> understand who murdered the, the person, why, where, and so on. Yeah, this is pretty close to that interactive TV because you've got 90 minutes of video. That's like, correct. We yeah, think of it as interactive yeah. video. Right. Well, now, you're playing this on the Macintosh right now. Is it available on all platforms? It's available on just about any type of machine that has a CD. And, and is there a minimum hardware requirement you need to run something like Sherlock? We recommend a reasonably fast CD drive. It works on most of the newer drives that are available out there. Uh -huh. and, um, but it will work on the slower machines uh -huh. and uh, machines with VGA and running DOS mm -hmm. and um, the whole line of Macintoshes and things like the new Sega CD or the Attendee VIS. All right. um, Pretty neat. All right, let's turn to Compton's New Media, Blake, and you have, you're going to show something called Jazz, and first thing I want to ask you is when you come out with this kind of CD, wh what is it? Is this an audio CD with, with words and pictures? It is a book with sound? How do you position this? Uh, jazz, a multimedia history, uh, I suppose you say it would be uh, edutainment. It's educational, it's entertainment. Uh, it is a CD version of a book. So this started out as a book? It started out as uh -huh. a book, and now this is the most current version uh, that is put out. Okay, could you show us a little bit about of the CD-ROM and, and what's in here? Certainly. I've just clicked on the opening menu and I'm going to the uh, contents, which will take me either to the text, pictures, or the music sections. Uh -huh. I'm going to go ahead and click on text and it will take me to the area where I can look at the one of the 24 different chapters that are included. Mm -hmm. And so what do we have here? And as you can see, it's an introduction. It's not only specific persons, but different eras throughout mm -hmm. jazz. And I'm going to click down, and I'm going to go to Chapter 13, Charlie Parker. Okay. And you're just calling up that chapter, and at the same time calling up the text and the music. And exactly. And you have uh, video clips in here too. I do as well. Um, jazz. I think this is an excellent uh, example of a multimedia product because we're dealing with music, and as we read the text, uh, we come across a number of multimedia events. Here's one of them. This happens to be a photo, and I go ahead. I'm so going to click the there. Metronome All Stars. Yes. And you can blow up that photo if That's you want correct. That. A number of the photos have a magnifying glass icon, which lets me know that I... Can you blow it up even more then? I mean, oh, I see. And the quality is excellent. That's uh, pretty good. Yeah. All right, so what else can we do? Let me go ahead and close that. Now, as you scroll down, we're talking about jazz, keep in mind. It's, this is something normally that we listen to. Mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of times in, in the articles or, or chapters that we're reading, It'll talk about a specific music style, an example. And as we come across musical examples, we've got the sheet music. Mm -hmm. And I can go ahead and click to, to get a specific example. 
so you can pull up that actual audio clip. Is that is that actually a clip of Charlie Parker playing that piece of sheet music? This one, uh, I, I believe it's it's his music done that's synthesized. I, I see. Okay. Okay. All right. What else can we do? And one of the, the more exciting features is, like we saw with Icom, we've got a number of videos included. And this one is Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie. Uh huh. Um, this is from 19, 1952. Yeah. This is the only known, only known uh, footage of Charlie Parker with audio. Huh. Wow. Now, if we like, I can enlarge the picture by pressing You're not my stuck space with the little mark. mini window there? Correct. Uh huh. So this is Charlie and, and Dizzy Gillespie's in this clip, too? Yeah, we'll, we'll be seeing Dizzy in just a moment. Uh -huh. So how much audio and video do you have on this one, CD? Uh, there's a total of about 20 minutes of the video for Windows uh -huh. that we're looking at now. Uh, it's got a total of 240 photographs, mm -hmm. 137 musical examples, uh, and 128 MIDI files, uh, in addition to its total of six videos. Yeah. And there and it there is. Oh, that is a long time ago, isn't it? All right, what else could you show us about the Jazz CD? Now, the, the Jazz, I've got uh, a search feature as well. Uh -huh. uh, if I'm looking for something specific, um, maybe I want to look up the hi-hat. Right. I can type in hi-hat, and it's going to do a search. These are all the locations where it, where it appears in my text. Uh -huh. I've just clicked on Next. Right. Now, I'm going to hi-hat for, for a reason. There's another type of musical example. We don't have sheet music in this case. This is, uh, shows a swing style hi-hat playing. Uh -huh. Right. That's pretty neat. What, what do you think is the marker for this kind of stuff? I mean, we saw Sherlock Holmes, you're gonna buy that, take it home and play with it. Is this institutional? Is it the individual person who's gonna buy something like this? Uh, the thing that's neat about jazz is, is jazz is ageless. Um, yeah. People who are teenagers who are just learning to appreciate music are interested in jazz. Uh, older folks who uh, have grew up with jazz are interested. I think that it's the type of product that everyone's interested in. But you in. see an individual just taking it home as you would a book or as you would a uh, Exactly, CD. yes. All right, two impressive examples of CD-ROM software. Thank you. This is a lot of fun, of course, playing games and listening to music, but CD-ROM technology can also be an incredible educational tool. At one small town high school in Ephrata, Pennsylvania, the students now have access to a three million book library thanks to CD-ROM software. There are 1,200 students here at Ephrata Senior High School. The Media Center, which in the good old days was just the library, contains 25,000 books, cassettes, and videos. But these students have use of nearly 3 million volumes through a CD-ROM system called Access Pennsylvania. Students can search the four-disc collection by author, title, or subject to find information on books available throughout the state. This makes the old card catalog obsolete. It's easier than going to the card catalog. And then if we don't have books here, I can get it from somewhere else. If the material is available at their library, they can go right to the bookshelf. If not, they can just print the screen and the librarian can fax a loan request for the item. The books are delivered regularly by UPS. They can find the materials that they want. And those materials can be books, uh, encyclopedia materials. They can be periodical materials and really no topic is off limits. So they are never turned away from this library without the materials that they desire. And that's a major change in how libraries operate. In addition to the information in state libraries, students can also search through 10 years worth of reader's guides to periodical literature in just seconds. They also have a career exploration module and Grolier's multimedia encyclopedia. Tranquility base here, the eagle has landed. Rocket twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. Librarian Deborah Cockle says these students may have an edge in the future because of this high-tech system. It is teaching students how to search an electronic database, and I think that's a skill for the 21st century. Students, whether they go to college or not, are going to have to deal with getting information out of databases. Um, for example, in the automotive industry, inventory parts are now on CD-ROMs, and students that take those kind of jobs will have to learn how to get in those databases, find what they want, and get out. So I think information retrieval is a skill that, that needs to be taught these days in high schools. And the latest technology makes time in the library more fun. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Janelle Patterson.
It's no secret that computers aren't the only platform for optical storage technology. CDs are now showing up on game consoles and as portable information managers. Here to show us some examples are John Branstetter of Turbo Technologies, also with us Les Inanchi of Sony. Les, I want to ask you about the multimedia player in just a second, which is the newest thing. But first of all, you guys sell one of these bundles that includes software, sound, board, and drive. Tell us what's in that bundle. Yes, Stuart. Uh, the desktop library, which I'm showing today, is a uh, new version of our bundle product, including a CD-ROM drive, a 16-bit soundboard so that allows the sound you to have, yes, allows you to get the latest audio uh, capabilities available on CD-ROM titles. And what are the discs that come with this? Uh, we include a set of seven CD-ROM titles in this particular kit, including Grolier's Encyclopedia, the Time Compact Almanac. Uh, the Presidents by National Geographic, Great Wonders of the World, Carmen San Diego, and a photo CD title. Uh -huh. All right, uh, this is your drive, by the way, that comes with the bundle, and you have the President's disc up here. Just show us for a second how that works. Right. Most people in CD-ROM titles are looking for high multimedia content, and this title has everything. It has text, it has pictures, and it has video. This is a clip of President Kennedy's speech to Congress now about the mission to, to the moon. Longest drive. Time for a great new American mm -hmm. enterprise. Time for this nation to take a Okay, I'm going to get back to you in a second, Les. I want to turn to you now, John. You guys have an interesting solution, too. In your Turbo Duo game console, you're actually selling a card now that will let this run as an external CD-ROM drive into your personal computer, right? Correct. It'll be a CD-ROM card or interface that allows you to use SCSI interface from a Mac uh -huh. or IBM, which virtually turns our Turbo Duo game system into a... CD-ROM drive for an IBM PC right. or a Macintosh. Okay, this is obviously a prototype of the card. It's not going to quite look Correct, like that, yeah. but you've got this plugged in here now. Show me that this actually works. We have the same Sherlock Holmes game, a Sherlock Holmes game, that we had before on the Apple Drive, the Baker Street here and that's the running off the Turbo Duo. Boys who happen to be on the proper side of the law. Okay, now I want you to reconfigure this. Now show me the kinds of things I can do with this just on its own as a game console running through a standard TV set. Okay, let me jump out of this here. Okay, so you've got to get rid of the, the Macintosh part of it. Right. Now. Okay, so what you would do is you pull out your... You pull out the SCSI interface. Your, your, cord, your card there. Right. Okay. Then you have to, of course, take the Macintosh CD out. All right, now what kind of software can you show me that, that runs on the console itself? I'll be showing you our newest game coming out called Lords of Thunder, okay. which this is a prototype disc, so it doesn't have the real artwork on it. Okay. So now we're going out, not to the Macintosh, but right out to a TV set. And what kind of game is Lords of Thunder? Lords of Thunder is a shooting game, which we call a VHD shooter, which uh -huh. is a, a new term that we're coming out with. And it's a sort of graphic sight and sound. VHD stands for? A vertical, horizontal, and diagonal. You know, uh -huh. Because the game actually it goes in all directions. Huh. All right, so tell me now as we look at this opening, what are some of the advantages of having a game off of CD-ROM? The advantage of CD-ROM is storage capacity, obviously, right. and also so you can use CD audio sound. In this particular game, there's an opening sequence which takes several megabytes, which have eaten up a normal cartridge mm -hmm. just for the introduction So are we in the screens. game now? Uh, we're going to the game. Uh -huh. And you can hear the CD quality audio. So what you're getting here is great game. audio, lots of animation, great graphics, and right. so on and so forth. A standard cartridge, you couldn't even do this game. On a regular game cartridge. That's correct. On a normal CD, one cartridge, if you put a cartridge on CD, yeah. you could put a couple thousand cartridges a on one CD. A couple of thousand CD. cartridges equals one CD. Right. Okay, and there's your sort of basic shoot em up game, yeah. huh? And this is Lords of Thunder, and you can see the background, the color. Yeah, yeah, horizontal, vertical, and the uh, Right. Depth, on the, right? Later on in the game, you'll see it goes vertical and horizontal. Okay. Um, let me show you one of our other games, which is not really a game like this that's more of an educational Okay, yeah, software. some people, you know, don't think that's the greatest use of technology is right. to shoot them up games, but you do have some educational software that actually runs off a game console. That's correct. And this, which one is this? This is a game called, or not a game, it's right. a book called Thomas's Snowsuit by Discus Books. Uh -huh. And they've put out some software for Mac, which is the same application, and they also put it in, are putting it out on our system now, mm -hmm. which it's basically a language tool okay. and also a uh, tool to... Uh, learn about how to say different words. So it's It'll a give sort you of interactive kind of book that yeah. you might normally see on a computer platform. Correct. And if you go and touch the pictures, it'll tell you what it is. Mother. Uh -huh. It'll also tell you in Spanish. So you c if you're letting somebody learn a language, 
this is fairly easy to get started running the language. So you're doing two things here. This can be a CD-ROM drive to run any CDs off a computer right. system, or you can do computer type things, really just running off that game console. Right, and also run CDGs, lay uh -huh. croaky CDs, yeah. and normal CD audio discs. Okay, Les, I want to get back to you, and the neatest, newest Sony toy here, I guess, is this multimedia CD player. Uh, show, show this off to us. Yes, this is uh, one of our newest products. It was introduced last year, the multimedia CD-ROM player. And it's basically a, uh, a portable appliance for those people who need to have a uh, source of information that they can take with them. They may not be heavy-duty computer users, but they still need to have access to the hundreds of megabytes of information that are available on CD-ROM disk. Now, what can I get out of this? I mean, video, audio, everything? Well, because of the technology that's used in this, CD-ROM XA, uh, it has capabilities that are far exceed what you'd imagine from its size. It's uh, able to play both audio CDs and CD-ROMs. Uh, you can get video clips, uh, animation, synchronized audio. Can you audio. fire it up for me so we can see some sure. of this? Sure. Uh, it's a great product for that person, as I said, who needs to have portable information available, typically a business user. There'll be a lot of business titles available but uh, uh, they'll all be able to be enhanced through use of things like video and audio. Uh -huh. So is there audio coming out of it? Oh, I see. We've got audio. We've got some animation there. Run through the, the sort of interface there. What's on the keyboard and so on? Well, where's, the, the, where's the disc in this thing? The disc is, I uh, can open it for you. It's a, ah, it's a okay. full-size 12-centimeter CD-ROM disc player. Mm -hmm. It's got a keyboard for uh, doing word search in something like an encyclopedia or mm -hmm. a database but it's designed to be very easy for the average non-computer uh, user to navigate. It has the main navigational keys are yes, no, and a cursor pad. So you can get through most of the software that way. It's got a built-in LCD screen for viewing uh, and also has video out, so if you want to connect it to a standard monitor with NTSC in, you can get 256 colors uh, on the mm. display. So I could play a standard audio CD on this? Standard audio CD. I can play a CD-ROM as you're doing now that would have uh, video and graphics and so on. Yes. Uh, who's going to use this? What, what market is this aimed at? Well, I think this is targeted, uh, at least initially, at the business and professional user. The person who needs to have a large database that they can take with them, somebody like a, an accountant, uh -huh. uh, a legal database, uh, uh, technical manuals, that kind of thing, a large corporate end user, vertical markets. Uh, it's specifically suited to that type of user. What kind of what kind of software titles are out that you could buy to actually use on that? Well, there are quite a few available now, and more to come. There are things like uh, full encyclopedias, dictionaries, foreign language mm. tutorials. Uh, the same kinds of CD-ROMs you might find for a computer. What about the Kodak Photo CD standard? Can you use that for that? Uh, well, although this uses the XA data structure that's used for Photo CD, this particular player uh, cannot play Photo CDs because of the display limitations. Uh -huh. Our desktop system, the desktop library, when can do Photo originally. CD. Yes. All right, lots of impressive toys, guys. Thank you very much. That is our look at CD-ROM software. Stay tuned now for this week's Computer News on Random Access. In the Random Access file this week, this is a special summer edition with a software review from Paul Schindler of Windows Magazine, provided courtesy of CMP Publications. The world's most popular home desktop publishing software has come to Windows. It's Print Shop Deluxe, and if you're a Print Shop fan, you'll love it. If you've never seen Print Shop, you'll still love it. For the novice, the package is very comforting. It steps you through the type of document you wish to print, the orientation, the background, and the layout. It shows you where to put the type, tells you how big it should be, and suggests a typeface. Of course, you can change that if you wish. Suppose you select greeting card, side fold, bon voyage, and the number two layout. If you double click on the T, you're presented with your text options. If you double click on the exclamation point, you can see the kind of options that Print Shop Deluxe offers for headlines. You never have to remember your choices. Everything is available through pull down menus. This package is so much easier to use than the DOS version. Plus, it works with any printer supported by Windows. Print Shop Deluxe, $80 from Broderbund in Novato, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy.
Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated plus background information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a subscription to the newsletter, call 1 800 366 9484 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use and information on the definitive guide to keeping your organization's software legal.